Good evening and welcome to tonight's regular scheduled Board of Education meeting. Um, please join me in standing and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And with this, I'll ask the Secretary to call the roll. Ready? President Wasserman? Here. Vice President Branstad? Here. Secretary Baker? Here. Treasurer Singer? Here. And Member Frizzy? Here. Member Gorton? Here. And Member McFarland? Here. Perfect Here. attendance and a quorum. Uh, first thing on the agenda um, is the consent agenda for our meetings from the last minutes and expulsion hearing minutes. Um, staff member resignations, uh, summer wage rates that Mr. Verlundy has set for this year, and legal invoices for payment to the tune of twelve hundred and some dollars in Seacrest Wardell for seven six hundred seventeen. Any additions or deletions or questions concerning the consent agenda? See none. I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. As stands. I move we approve consent agenda items two point one through two point four. Support by move by Yvonne or move by Angela. Support by Yvonne. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. Uh, moving on to request to address the board. We have no formal requests. However, does anybody else care to address the board? Seeing none, we'll move on to the rest of the agenda. Now, hand it over to Mike. We have our shining star employees uh, that do, and our first one is Diane White. Why well, Diane's coming up, I'll read a little bit about her. Ms. White earned her bachelor's degree from Texas State University in 1990 with a major in mathematics and a mi minor in computer science. In 1995, Diane earned her master's of education degree in instructional technology from the University of Houston. Ms. White taught math and computer science for a number of years in Texas and was then promoted to the coordinator of instructional technology in Clute, Texas for 10 years before moving to the Midland area. Ms. White began her MPS career in 2007 as a math teacher at Jefferson Middle School. From, th from 2010 to 2012, Ms. White taught math at both Jefferson and Central Middle Schools. In 2012, she split her day teaching math at Jefferson and H.H. Dow High. Now her full schedule is teaching mathematics at Charger two chargers at H.H. Dow High School. A former supervisor, Ms. White, said she's an excellent teacher that is dedicated to, to meeting the diverse learning needs of her students. She differentiates instruction and develops lessons that reflect the needs of her students. Her students are consistently engaged in the learning process. Ms. <coughs> White is persistent in her efforts to find effective ways to help students learn, especially those experiencing difficulties. Yet another supervisor stated, her work is greatly appreciated by the district. She is a hard worker, strongly prepared, and cares for students at both the personal and academic level. I enjoy, I enjoy working with Ms. White. Diane was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS parent. Some of her comments include, my son has Diane for ninth grade algebra. When we met with Diane at conferences, it was noted that our son's work needed to improve. Diane was quick to meet with us and come up with a plan to work with him after school. This has helped our son and has improved his understanding of the subject. Diane offers her time to help kids learn. We appreciate the time that she has taken with our son. Congratulations to Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is yours too, Diane. Oh. <coughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I'm now doing math adult tutoring, so I appreciate what you're doing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Our second shining star is, and I'm going to murder the last name, Becky. The uh, Becky Tom Tomaszewski. Thank you, Mr. Relindy. <laughs> Sorry about that, Becky. Mrs. T is what they call her. So, Mrs. T began her MPS career as a classroom reading paraprofessional in 1993. Becky's entire MPS career has been spent as a prepare paraprofessional at Chestnut Hill. Her paraprofessional assignments through the years have included being a focus para, working with special needs children, assisting in the Chestnut Hill office, supervising in both the lunchroom and playground. And Becky has been the welcoming smile that greets students and families as they arrive 
in her role at Chestnut Hill's Morning Supervisor. She has been in her current position of Chestnut Hill Elementary Media Center paraprofessional since 2005. Some comments by Becky's supervisors have included, Becky is very thorough and demonstrates professionalism in all that she does. Mm -hmm. She is highly efficient and accomplishes a great deal in the amount of time amount of time she is at school. She continually goes above and beyond what is asked for her in all that she attempts. The media center is loved by all. Becky does a good job of keeping our media center colorful, friendly, and inviting to students. Becky is a great paraprofessional and asset to Chestnut Hill. Our students benefit from her hard work, efforts, and helplessness. Becky was nominated for the Shining Star Award by some of her MPS colleagues. Here are just a few of their comments. During March's reading month, Becky went above and beyond to create special events for the entire school. Under the theme, Get in the Game, Read, we had special sports themed weeks. The entire month's activities culminated with a celebration that included community involvement in the form in the form of all the local mascots coming for a dance-off celebration. <laughs> <laughs> all this was under Becky's leadership and creativity. She succeeded in getting kids fired up to read. Becky goes above and beyond her duties in the library every day, and she's always pleasant and helpful to students and staff. She is so deserving of the Shining Star Award. Congratulations, Becky. <laughs> As well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I got to experience Becky's uh, media center. I, when I've read the last two years, being the baseball nut I am, I've read baseball books. So this year <laughs> when I arrived at Chestnut Hill, they had all the students in um, baseball jerseys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the library was decorated. So I really appreciated it. I felt very welcome. So. <clears throat> Thank you, both of you. Back to you, Mike. I got to look at my agenda and get it back open. So, where are we at? Uh, Woodcrest and Plymouth Elementary School, IB. We're going to have Bridget and Jeff come up. And Alan. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Good evening. Plymouth and Woodcrest are Phase 1 PYP schools, and tonight we would like to share with you another facet of PYP called Taking Action. Helping me tonight will be Mr. Penix from Woodcrest Elementary, Ellen Flegenheimer Riggle, our PYP coordinator, and of course in the way back, as you notice on our title, it says, Created by Students Taking Action with Help from Adults. We had this presentation created by fifth grade students. Mia Allen is in the back. Mia, could you at least stand so they have an idea on who created this presentation? Whoa. <laughs> there were two other fifth graders that were also involved, but they were busy tonight with other activities. Um, we gave a charge to our fifth grade students because they have the one-on-one -on -one iPads and have had them all year. So we thought, what a great way for them to share their technology skills and to also mm. have take action and teach you, the audience, what it means to have action. So this presentation is going to inform you in many ways. The action component of PYP involves service in the widest sense. Back one more. In the widest sense of the word service to fellow students, to the staff, and to the community. Student action can be taken by an individual or by a group working collaborat collaboratively. Taking action begins with how we think. It can be taking you to what you have learned or know and acting on it. It goes well beyond the classroom. There are many forms of action. I'm be skipping ahead a little. All right, so most people think taking action is what you do, but that's not right. Taking action is a part of who you are. If you want to change the world, you have to change yourself first. In each classroom, we have what's called an action cycle. After the students have gone through a unit of inquiry, they may take a central idea and create an idea from it, something that they've learned or something new, something that they choose to do to make a difference. 
then they act on it. They think as a group or individually, what can we do to give back? What can we do to make this a better place? And then they act, and then they reflect, and as you can see, it's circular. It just keeps on going. As you can see, there's, a diff there's many kinds of action. We have direct action. It can be where a student takes action from person to person or person to environment. It can be as simple as the student picking up trash at the school on their own. It could be advocacy, creating an awareness. Our second graders, through their science kit, they were learning about the water cycle. And as they went through the water cycle, they discovered that, discovered that we waste water in many areas within Plymouth. And so they created, on their own, signs that displayed throughout our building uh, don't waste water. Please don't waste water, don't waste water. And those are hanging throughout our building. So this is, uh, this is from completing their sharing the planet of the unit of inquiry. We also have what's called indirect action with a person to, the person to the community where we had our leadership Plymouth where they collected food for the Midland County Emergency Pantry. They got together as a group. They decided what do we want to do to help our community become a better place and this is what they've done. All right, on this slide, um, you'll see some action that right now is in the initial stages. Uh, these are from first graders at Woodcrest. And I think a couple of things um, to highlight regarding action in the PYP. Um, we believe right now we're seeing uh, higher levels of engagement and higher levels of understanding on the parts of our students. And as you heard uh, Bridget share, um, action is one of the encouraged steps um, from the IB for the PYP program. And when you really think about it, for students or folks to be able to take action, they have to know what to take action about, um, meaning that there's got to be a greater depth of understanding there. Um, and in this instance right now, like I said, these are first, first graders, um, and they have not yet completed the unit, and they have not yet uh, been at the action point. Uh, but they will get there, and right now they're contemplating ways uh, to help endangered animals. And once again, when you think about it, compared to facts and vocabulary terms, which certainly is part of the process, but if you're going to take action, you really have to have that uh, greater depth of knowledge. And I think you'll see that in some uh, upcoming slides as well. Um, we sat down and we brainstormed and talked about what they knew about action and we read some articles about action and the action cycle and how it fits and then they took some copious notes and from those notes then they went forth and put together the PowerPoint that you're oops, looking at. So one of the things that is a takeaway for them and, and is a part of the action cycle is that the more experienced students have with this kind of work, the more powerful it becomes, working together to make the world a better place. So in our initial stages, it's actually a year ago, April at our PD, that I introduced the action cycle to the staff at Woodcrest and Plymouth. So we're one year out with our knowledge of how the action cycle works. So in the beginning, teachers have to kind of be the model for what that looks like and kind of encourage it. And then the more times and the more um, practice, it's going to come from the students themselves. So here are just some bullet points about actions. They don't have to be big or elaborate. They can be small. So it can be as simple as taking the action to open the door to a school to a visitor. It could be as simple as picking up um, the trash. It could be as simple as picking up the balls that are left on the playground and bringing them inside the building. Some require more planning and reflection than others. They can take place anywhere, anytime, and in groups or individually. And taking action extends the learning beyond the classroom. Students become experts in their understanding when taking an action. Taking an action helps students develop skills not found in a textbook. So goal setting, gathering information, planning, preparing, and reflecting. And then the impact of an action should extend beyond the initial purpose. So hopefully the signs that are at Plymouth that the second graders put up about not wasting the water, that has now extended 
from Plymouth to their homes and the kids will go forth with a much greater awareness about water as a finite resource. So then I shared this quote with the kids, so they put it in here, never doubt that a small group of committed individuals can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. This is our group working together in <clears throat> the presentation. <laughs> As I mentioned, with uh, the greater depth of understanding, um, the shot on the right is an interesting one. Um, that is a long line of approximately 75 birthday kits uh, that were put together by our kindergartners. Uh, they were put together uh, shortly before the holidays. And they did that as part of their uh, Who We Are unit. And as you might imagine, there was plenty of discussion um, in that time frame uh, regarding um, helping the needy and helping those uh, who are not so well off and with uh, certainly the tutelage of the teachers, but they came up with this uh, activity as, as a replacement for the, the uh, typical holiday party. And uh, the kids uh, put together these uh, birthday bags. Uh, they had birthday cake, they had frosting, as you can see, they had the uh, tinfoil baking pans, they had candles, they had birthday hats, they had all sorts of these things that the classes had brainstormed uh, about what needed to go into each birthday kit. And they came th through, thanks to our uh, parents and family support, with flying colors and produced 75 well-stocked bags. And as you can see on the screen, uh, the agencies that received those bags. Over here uh, on the left side, um, it was our annual Toys for Tots program. And this one was coordinated by our fifth grade safeties. Now, we've done this project for a number of years, and we've had pretty good results that certainly we felt good about. But I think the way that the action part of it um, is starting to take root with the students, uh, this was a record-setting year for us. Um, we had five enormous boxes of uh, toys that were, were donated, and it was very gratifying to see the safeties' faces since they coordinated the project when um, the Marine representatives came to pick it up because <laughs> they were flabbergasted by the level of support that was there. And then they also uh, created morning announcements um, that uh, they shared uh, some of the values that are stressed um, as part of the PYP um, unit and showing compassion, um, caring, and so on. And as you can see, it really took root um, with the students and also, of course, the teachers were promoting those uh, values as well in the, in the classroom. We, did, we, we created a random sampling tonight to share with you. It's certainly not everything that we've done at Plymouth and Woodcrest, but we wanted to give you a flavor of, of the projects that, that we have benefited from. On the left, on the left here, we have um, a can drive. Our, our fifth graders would like to go to uh, Mystic Lake, and their funds were short. So they got together with our PTO president, and they created a can drive and kind of kept track, and they actually have met their goal of $1,000. That's a lot of cans. Um, and so they're on their way. We also had first graders. They um, were doing a unit of inquiry on how they could make a difference in the world. And they brought up how important animals were to them in the world. And so they had the Humane Society into their classroom. They did some conversation with them, and they thought it would be a great service project if they could do many donations to the Humane Society. And they collected over 200 wow. items. And so they were very proud of that. <laughs> and here we also have um, students working together to take action. We have our, our water cycle poster up top. We have, of course, our ambassador at Plymouth who wanted everyone to vote yes for the bond proposal. <laughs> and then we have... Um, I remember him. <laughs> he'll be a uh, future president. He's already told us that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have just a collection of be a thinker because as we go through this process, we encourage our kids to be, to be thinkers, to use our learner profile, to be reflective, to be caring. How can you make change in the world? We have so many choices and just making sure that we're making good choices to make Plymouth, a better place to make their world a better place. Um, as Bridget um, spoke about earlier, they had the second, uh, second grade water unit. Um, now, we, our second graders, of course, did the, a water unit as well. And what's interesting with the IB is that you have some common uh, themes or units, but each school 
uh, and their staffs uh, develop those in unique ways. And our project um, was, the, if you can see that, the WW4W, Woodcrest Works for Water. And part of their um, understanding, uh, the, did a lot of work uh, learning about the finite resource of water, how it has to be managed well, and it's essential to life, of course, on Earth. And then they also uh, did quite a bit of research about the multiple ways that water is used. Um, locally, for example, uh, the water park, or the, the spray park, I should say, uh, the water park down the road, perhaps in Mount Pleasant, of course, the importance of the Great Lakes, water recreation, and countless other ways. But through their studies, they also, of course, learned that um, clean drinking water is not necessarily readily available across the world. And with that, when it came time to choose uh, the action after a considerable uh, amount of looking and reviewing at ideas, um, the grade decided to pursue a, a water project for Sudan. Um, it's water for South Sudan what is the proper term. Uh, they wanted to have a fundraising effort for that organization. And then once again, of course, they contemplated selling trinkets, erasers, keychains, et cetera. Well, they finally settled in on um, selling T-shirts. And thanks to their hard work, um, uh, over $1,000 was collected uh, for this organization and then sent um, to Water for South Sudan. OK, well, this was. Um, uh kind of an action that took place really based on one one single student's question to a teacher. He, he asked his fifth grade teacher, um, do you think that we could do something to honor the veterans? And so she said, well, what were, what were you thinking? And he said, well, don't you think it would be really kind of cool if we did something that was for the whole school? We got the whole school involved. So they brainstormed as a um, as a class then of some different ideas. She put together kind of a I don't know, an email with a, a variety of suggestions of ways. And then they built this wall in Plymouth. And this is only one side of it. There's a, there was a whole other wall. And they did all kinds of things from, um, as you can see, looking at the vocabulary, they did some found poetry based on some books. They did letters. They made banners. And the um, found poetry is this here where they read a book and they put it together. This one happened to be inspired by a book called The Wall, and it's about the Vietnam Memorial. And so I was in the classroom when they were doing it in one of the fifth grades, and the kids said, wouldn't it be just so cool if we could get our poem brought to the wall? And I said to them, well, you know, actually, I have a son who lives in Washington, D.C., so we'll see if we can make that happen. So we mailed the... Um, we mailed the poems, we, and he took them and delivered them and then sent them back a photo of <laughs> him laying their poem at the um, wall. So it was just a true of the action cycle and how it just keeps um, repeating. As I mentioned, with the uh, deeper, uh, the greater depth of understanding and the uh, greater uh, depth of engagement, uh, what we see as part of the inquiry process is that the kids, we, we hopefully have fostered their um, desire to wonder. Um, and after doing um, the second grade water unit, these young ladies were inspired to take a look at the approach of their teacher about finding out some women who really made a difference um, in the world. And with their teachers, teachers once again um, coaching, it, they came up with, this kit here that you see on the screen uh, with books and posters that they created, all sorts of information that they had learned regarding um, women who made a difference in the world. And really, it, it really is kind of the core of the, of the PYP because we want to provide the kids choice, um, certainly in some of the areas that they're interested in, and then also provide them choice with how to demonstrate their new knowledge and this whole Girls Who Changed the World kit that you see, once again, similar to this presentation created by the Plymouth fifth graders, was all their creation. Um, and as opposed to, for example, uh, completing a variety of worksheets, you can see to put something together like this, you have to have a deep understanding 
uh, of what it is that you're tackling. Um, thank you to the students of Plymouth and Woodcrest for taking action. We are, we are so proud of, of the students. And like I said, this is just a sampling of what we've done. We didn't want to lose this one within the presentation because it's important too. This is a fourth grade student taking action by writing the PY column for the class newsletter every month. And so that's what she does at Plymouth. It's pretty cool. And here are our PowerPoint creators. We have Allie Miller on the left, Lawrence Millward on, in the middle, and Mia Allen on the right. And like I said, they designed it, they did it all. Very nice. Thank you. Very we nice. thought you may enjoy tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Comments, questions? Uh, comments for sure. Mm -hmm. I love the PYP program. I, I am just floored by the impact that the, the teachers, the <coughs> staff at the schools are having on our students and not just the outputs that, you know, they're, they're getting these, what did you say, 200 bags to, to send off to, to help others, but they're changing lives. And, and they're changing their own lives in the process and they're helping others as well and they're learning and it's just, it's just commendable. Very, very cool. It's nice for us to sit back and reflect also on what we've done in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it really is amazing. Thank you. So when I see what you're doing with these young children and what they're doing, I think it's just so neat that they can learn at this young age that they can affect change in the world. They really can. And so when I see that, it makes me feel really good about you know what kind of world we're going to live in when these young people get to be adults. Do you get your own water bill? Will you be able to track? If you no, I'm curious. I'm curious yeah. at Plymouth. Like, will you guys be able to actually track? I'm if sure what, someone what down here could help me do that. <laughs> I don't even know if you. I just wanted to say to Mia too. Excellent job on the PowerPoint. It's beautiful. Really beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Tell your thank classmates you. thank you too, Mia. Yeah, please. Thank and you. I would just come. It's just amazing the creep, all the different ideas that. I'm sure you were generated in the classroom in the variety of what you came up with. And this is just yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I and mean, in this. Two years from now, it's going to yeah. look so yeah. different than it looks. It's just right amazing. Now. Many times, <coughs> teachers are guiding right now because the kids aren't used to, to this. Mm -hmm. And just think as they go deeper, they'll come up with it on their own. But our teachers are real creative and they're very helpful. And it's because of them, too, that we were able to do this. Right. That's what I need to think. Um, also, want to comment on. The PYP coach, uh, in our instance, Ellen's done a fantastic job of kind of conducting the orchestra. Uh, and the teachers have worked very, very hard um, as well. It's been a uh, very labor-intensive switch to go down this road. But as you can see, the results are, are very worth it. Yeah. Thank, you very good. Thank you. Very good. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't we switch over here? Um, We'd also like to recognize another group that we have, and as you all know, we have um, a number of volunteers in a number of capacity, uh, a number of ways that they volunteer in our school district. And this was a month to recognize the volunteers, and so we ask each of the school buildings to nominate a volunteer that we could recognize. And um, I think, uh, help me Cindy, a week ago, we had something in the Mendaley News thanking our volunteers in the district as well. And so um, Cindy put together this um, recognition to, for our star volunteers. And so um, I think each of them were listed on that day. But at Adams, we have Dr. T.J. Nugent, who volunteers almost every day at Adams for almost 12 years now. And um, he's positively affected at least 300 Adams students over the last 12 years. Um, uh, in Carpenter, we have Miss Nicole Woods, who's volunteered at Carpenter for three years. She wears many hats from PTO president to room parent, and so that's Carpenter's nominee. East Lawn's nominee was Mr. Claire Morris, volunteers in East Lawn Media Center. Mr. Morris has no personal ties to East Lawn, but he gives his time willingly and has a smile for everyone. So, Plymouth's uh, recognition went to Miss Melissa Brasetti. I hope I'm saying that right. Brissette. Brissette, thank you. Wears many hats at Plymouth from PTO president to volunteering. Two daughters are in her classrooms. Melissa has been a member of our district information committee as well. At Siebert, Mr. Al 
Potts. Anyone like come to that one? Uh, drives from Ann Arbor every Monday to volunteer. Yeah. He's been volunteering at Siebert Classroom for five years. He reads with children's sports classroom teachers and spends lunch hours with students who need one on one. So, all the way from Ann Arbor. And we also have Miss Mary Lou Reed. Um, she is. Uh, Volunteered at Seabird for over eight years. She helps struggling students with reading and assists with one-on-one -on -one phonics instruction. Woodcrest, Miss Anne Marie Erickson has volunteered <coughs> Woodcrest for five years with Woodcrest Jump Rope Team. Mm -hmm. If you've watched that, that's pretty special. She is the other coach on the team and helps to manage the 90 to 100 jumpers in the program. At Jefferson, Mr. Larry Adamick. Mm -hmm. Has volunteered at Jefferson the past two years and at Central for numerous years before that. He works one on one and does small group work mentoring Jefferson students. Justin Hill in Northeast uh, must chose the same person, Miss Anna May Veal. Speaks uh, volumes to Miss Veal has been chosen to start volunteer at both Chestnut and Northeast. She volunteers in the Media Center at both buildings. She even helped in another MPS Elementary Media Center when they had a large project which they needed assistance. H.H. Dow's High School recognition went to Miss Nilsa Takamori, created a, and now maintains the Dow High website. She has worked on the website on a daily basis for the past five years. DHS relies on Nilsa as she posts and updates information to staff families. Midland High's recognition went to Mr. Dennis Klippa, who has been volunteer for MAH for two years. He started the MH at Right. At Amateur Radio Club in 2013 with, with some other volunteers. He strives to find ways that club members are motivated to participate in interesting challenges and leadership roles within the club. And Mr. John Schmoody has volunteered at MHS for two years in the construction of a wooden canoe and two kayaks, which I think uh, CIA committee's gone and seen. A student commented, Mr. Schmoody is always using Help showing us different ways to solve any issue that we come up with and always has a smile on his face. Yes. And he's quite into that project. So, mm. so once again, <laughs> thanks to all the volunteers. These are just a small sampling of them. We have so many in the district, and it makes MPS the special place it is. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Any comments? Great volunteers. Yes. So it's exciting to see that. Uh, who, who, what names came up, and uh, to hear a little bit about them. It's wonderful. Thanks to all of them. Okay, I have one more uh, item I need to mention today. Um, our NPS Safety Awards. We have a committee who has determined that four district building the areas or areas have completed the 2014 year without recording any employee injuries. These are Adams Elementary School, the Administration Center, East Lawn Elementary School, and the Science Resource Center. The Safety Excellent Awards were presented earlier today during professional development staff meetings. So, okay. that was, we do that every year and it goes very well off of Everybody should get home the same way they came. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Easy mantra. And Mike, do you want to mention something about uh, Lynn and... Uh, oh, I did. I skipped yeah. over that. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we've had a couple busy board members lately, and um, Pam. How but only a couple. What? But only a couple. <laughs> only a couple. Well, <laughs> two that um, were busy in education classes. How's that? And, and Pam has uh, already, in her what year and a half, mm -hmm. um, earned level one certification from MASB for taking courses. So congratulations, Pam. It's a nice pin from MASB. Thank you. And Lynn evidently has been at this for a little while, and she has earned yeah, that one last class. <laughs> <laughs> Ward of Merit, as well as the Level One Certification. She's, if we keep her long enough, she'll be at the Master Board Member Awards. <laughs> Thanks to both of you, both the the longest tenured veteran on the board and the shortest tenured rookie. <laughs> or no, second shortest. Oh, sorry, I'll take <laughs> pressure's, that out of here. pressure's on now. <laughs> so thank you. I hope you found it of value. Move on to Board of Education matters. We have a uh, mic for action, the boilers. So we have our very first bond bid award. And um, so we did a, most of you know, we did a pre-purchase of our boilers for the middle schools for the summer. It was something a little different than it's been done. 
because we need the boilers to arrive and be made and be arrived. And so uh, the bid went to RL Dretman Company of Southfield in the amount of $318.522. And that's going to come bond proceeds. We did accept, a, accept an alternative on the boiler at Northeast because of the potential difficulty of getting that boiler in and out of that boiler room. If you, it's mm -hmm. in the basement over there. And so it's going to arrive, be disassembled, and then taken in and then reassembled in the boiler room. And oh, so okay. that costs a little bit of additional money, um, mm -hmm. eight or $9,000. So it's well worth uh, the problems that we may have <coughs> trying to get that boiler in over some other equipment as well. So mm -hmm. they accepted that alternative. And this required for action, so I'll accept the motion. We can ask questions after a motion. Anybody move to accept the bids? I motion to accept the bids and items 5.1. Support. Moved by Pam, support by Angela. Any questions or comments on the bids? Any idea of cost savings this may give us going into the need for uh, a boiler, um, the cool season? Probably don't have that for dollars for you right now, um, but we can tell you that um, we chose these because they were um, going to bring us energy cost savings immediately. But keep in mind, um, the ventilator units in the classroom at Jefferson will also be replaced. The northeast ones, because we don't want to overinvest in that building, um, the ventilator units will be um, refurbished. But then the, the biggest part of the, not only are the boilers are more fish save money, but the big piece of con that will happen is when we put the controls mm -hmm. on our, our right. heating and cooling systems there. And so um, that's yet to come. Okay. So this work will all be done during the summer then? Correct, that's it? all summer work. All right. And Mike. Well, this uh, is exciting, by the way, to see all this. Yeah, it's starting, yeah. mm -hmm. starting to happen. Any comment to how that looked against the estimate? That, that was the lowest bid, I believe, Bob? It was the lowest bid. It was the lowest bid. Less than we anticipated? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's also nice to spend the money in Michigan. I like, to, like to see that. Great, great, great. Any other questions? Well, it's our first vote on our first bid for our bonds. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, that show is unanimous. <coughs> Move on to curriculum. And I think the first thing we have is a study committee. And I believe Patrick's <coughs> going to read it. That is correct. We met Monday, March 23rd. Um, Big thing was we discussed proposed staff development proposals for 15 16 were shared and discussed. 18 proposals were made, including the continuation of several major district initiatives, including providing collaborative time to write IB primary years program units, development of blended and online learning, online learning courses, and the ICT Midland model release days. Several proposals focused on NSTEP data analysis with the intent of vetting the effectiveness of curriculum, curricular alignment efforts implemented over the past five years. Total cost of 18 proposals is $158,435. These proposals will be brought to the April Board of Education meeting for public examination. Um, implementation will be based on available funds that are budgeted for 15-16 school year. Also, in NSTEP assessments, Mary Chilton and Brian discussed the new Michigan summit, summative assessments. Major topics reviewed including test timing, building schedules, technology preparations, and expected accountability metrics. The group reviewed sample performance tasks and online test items. Any questions or comments? See none, we'll turn it over to Brian. Um, as Patrick just pointed out, we're bringing for you information tonight on our 18 staff development proposals. Um, as was pointed out, these 18 proposals range on items um, from our most significant fiscal investment of the development of the online and blended learning portions to a lot of proposals that are focused around vetting our new data sets that will be coming from the MSTEP tests that our students are taking right now. Um, as has been past tradition, the implementation of these proposals will be based on what's allotted during the 15-16 budget and also um, we're gonna try and write some of these into our Title II fund grants as well. So exact finances are to be determined once our build our budget process is over um, and ranking and priority has already been determined and the funds will tell us which of these we'll implement next year. So these are in front of you now for the public review period. If anyone wants more information, we have lots of documentation behind each and every single one of these proposals. I'd be happy to explain and share with anyone in the public or on the board would like to see them. We'll bring these back to you at our next board meeting. Any questions or comments? 
just a quick comment. It's good to see we, A, continue to invest, and B, that we're changing that we need to invest. Both things are good to see from a district standpoint. Any others? Okay, moving on, we'll go to finance, and I think the first thing we have is a <coughs> FFO study committee meeting notes from Pam. Okay. April 13th, 2015 minutes, uh, February financials, Mrs. Lokes presented the February financial reports. No unusual items were noted. The February financial reports were included on the March 16th Board of Education agenda for approval. March financials were not available at this meeting, but will be shared as soon as they are available. Bond financials, financial activities regarding our recently passed bond millage were shared with, by Mr. Cooper. Work has already been done regarding project uh, projected taxable value growth, development of the preliminary official statement, choosing a paying agent, draw schedules and investment of bond funds, and conferencing with Standard & Poor's, our rating agency. Pricing of the bonds occurs on April 23rd with the executive bond purchase agreement taking place on April 24th. Closing on the first bond series is scheduled for May 21st. Bond update. Daryl Dumbrow from Barton Malo, the construction manager, and Dale Jerome from French Associates, the architect, provided an, over, an overview of the early bond work, including, including how the process will generally work and the early projects. The early projects include boiler replacement at the two middle schools, pre-selection of building automation controls, building demolition of Parkdale, Cook, and modulars, and early preparation for the central campus. Preview of board budget workshop. The committee reviewed the general format and topic of the upcoming budget workshop. The committee provided input on any additional information they would like to review. Next meeting, Monday, May 11th at 5. Questions or comments? For many of the engineers in our community, mm. I'm representing you in that meeting. Uh, you'll be glad to hear that the controls, which will be very significant in all of this, uh, are both going to be standardized across the district. And also vetting the three to five companies is going on extensively on what they bring to the table, what their histories have been, how their controls work, how they develop, what generation they're in, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm feeling really good at how they're approaching the instrumentation and control systems. It's vital. So, so for our engineering groups out there, you should feel pretty good about how that's proceeding. And it looks like modulars could possibly come off the demolition list if we can uh, auction. auction them off. Yep. Okay, turn it over to Bob. Okay, first, just for information, we have gifts totaling $20,218.75. They're from a wide variety and for varying amounts there from the Adam PTO, Sigma Alpha, Iota, Clark uh, Company, uh, Woodcrest PTO gave a couple. The Midland High Athletic Boosters Club has three listed there. And the Jefferson uh, Parent Advisory Committee has uh, five of them listed there. Also, the Midland Area Community Foundation. Um, you'll see some different uh, uh, organizations in there that donated money for various reasons. Uh, like always, uh, the gift list is uh, pretty amazing when you look at it month to month. Um, if I can get you to look at 7-3, though, this is going to require action. We have a couple of items here, and the first one, we'll just handle them separately, I think, because they vary greatly here. But the first one has three items. They total $37,320. Um, they're all here because of the amount of money related to them, need board approval. Uh, one is for baseball uniforms for the high school from the athletic boosters. Another one is for uh, pool ball equipment from the Dow High boosters. And then there's 27000 coming for the International Baccalaureate Career Related Program. And that came from the uh, Midland Area Community Foundation uh, Unrestricted Endowment Fund. So you have three items there that require board action and approval. I'll take a motion to approve 7.3 donations. I'll second that. No, oh, I, I need to take <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I move that we approve okay. um, item 7.3. And now I'll take now a I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments on those three gifts? Wow, that's amazing. It is. It's really yeah, if you pair those with the other twenty thousand, all the other ones. What is that? Almost sixty thousand dollars this month. That's incredible. And our volunteers. It's incredible. Thank you to the donors. 
Any others, questions or comments? See none, all, of, of, all in favor of approving those three gifts say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it and thank you donors. Okay, we have thank one you. more item there, 7-4 if you will for action. Uh, this is uh, for H.H. Dow High Music Uniform Purchase. Um, don't see the money amount there. I know I saw it earlier, but it came from um, kind of a combination like the last time with some money coming from uh, the uh, Dow Family Foundation and then uh, the money that's also been used in the Looking Sharp Fund. It was a total of $59,694. And uh, for different parts of the music program, you've seen the purchases, I think, before. Mm -hmm. Uh, similar in nature, just which school, and you'll see the right up there too as to why they select them, and 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 many times you'll see kind of the same reason. Uh, sometimes it's availability of size, but a lot has to do with the color and matching. Otherwise, when you buy things in segments, with some of the dye lots, you can get lots of different looking uniforms when they all get out there. So they're trying to match up, but that also needs your approval. I'll accept a motion in a second. Motion to accept item 7.4 for the purchase of uh, the Dow High band uniforms. Support. support by Lynn. Moved by Pam, support by Lynn. Questions, comments? I am so happy with this, uh, with this looking sharp, the, the whole thing, and, the, and, and frankly, the getting people with the confidence of buying these uniforms. <coughs> that was around all the noise of two high schools for the last five years. And it's so good to see this move on and people getting the degree of confidence of where we're going with the bond millage and everything else that that's where we're going to be. So I'm very pleased to see that. Any others? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you again. Turn it over to uh, Gary. Thank you, Mr. Wasserman. We had some uh, retirement, effective all three of them, June 11th. <coughs> three teachers, many years of experience, and thank them for their service over the years. Uh, Ms. Sandy uh, Collinson, teacher at Jefferson Middle School, uh, Rebecca Hurd, teacher at Millen High, and Carol Lewin, teacher at H.H. Dow High. I know Mrs. Lewin, and she was an institution at Dow High. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the arts think, wow. Definitely veteran teachers. Yes. Yeah. And con congratulations to them. Uh, you'll see listed in the agenda correspondence to and from the board. You also see our next meetings coming up. And just a reminder to board members and the public, the June meetings were shifted a week each, uh, as Bob highlighted today in the budget question. So make sure those are duly noted in your calendars. <coughs> this time we move to study discussion. I'll begin to my right. I'll ask Pam. I just want to thank uh, Blake Sobel and the staff that really helped get us set for the M-STEP and, and uh, being successful in that. And from the notes going around, it looked like we were in the, we had the most test login activity on the first day, which was wonderful. I think I gave my comments on the presentation. I just am amazed, though, by the gifts. I just can't get past that. I just wish every school district could be as fortunate. Being a new board member, I guess I see these things now in different eyes than I saw them a few months ago, but it, it just amazes me to, to hear about, you know, the volunteers and the gifts and the IB program and Mike's Monday morning letter with all the student achievements for the year academically, uh, the play last Friday, last weekend. It's, as a board member and as a parent, it's just, I'm grateful and amazed by what I see in here uh, on a routine basis. Well, to kind of echo on that line, you know, with the Shining Stars, but now we have our volunteer awards, and upcoming will be our Gerstacker Awards. We just, we just are so grateful for all the people that make Midland Public Schools work and, and uh, help our kids to be successful. Um, just lots going on, like uh, Patrick mentioned, Phantom of the Opera that Midland High put on last week was absolutely incredible. Um, how they can sing and act like that at such a young age. Uh, continues to amaze me, and I know Dow High's um, going to be performing Bring It On in a couple weeks, so that'll be another great uh, opportunity to see our kids and their talent. Um, I had an opportunity to go and uh, usher at the fourth grade, um, all well, the fourth graders went to a music presentation for instruments that the Midland Symphony uh, sponsors, and 
Boy, that was fun too, and it was amazing to have that many. There were over, what'd they say, six or eight hundred fourth graders and at the Center for the Arts, and and they were great. It was really fun and um, inspiring them to be future musicians and probably performers for us. Um, and then and along the line of, there's artwork at the library and the Center for the Arts, and I saw a design and ad was in the newspaper and mm -hmm. all the sports that are going on, and robotics is heading to the worlds, I believe, this week. So um, just just commenting on just, we, we cover all the gamuts from arts to music to, you know, robotics and, and math and, and so many neat opportunities. And I guess lastly, I'd like to wish uh, Blake Sobel good, good luck and best wishes. We'll, we'll miss him. He's done incredible, incredible things for us these last few years in our IT department. So I wish he and his family well as they head back to Texas. Thanks. Well, I think I echo everything everyone else said. Um, congratulations to the Shining Stars. I don't know Mrs. T, but I know Diane, and um, I have volunteered in her classroom before at Central, and my son has her um, this year for computer programming, and um, she's a great teacher. Um, also, yes, a lot of things going on. It's hard to believe we've already made it through spring break. Um, spring sports are going on, and um, this Saturday is prom. So hopefully everyone makes already. Yes, already. Uh, hopefully everyone makes very good choices this weekend, <laughs> <coughs> well, including my own child. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe especially. <laughs> uh, not a lot to say that hasn't already been said. Just to touch on the PYP presentation tonight, um, I thought it was great, and uh, you know, like Pam, I think you said it really well, where you can't find these principles that they're learning in a textbook. It, it really shows us what the true potential of these kids uh, really amounts to when given the right guidance and given the opportunity to make these choices and experience the reaction of their actions. Um, they've achieved so much in such a short period of time and, and you know just listing some of these things, a thousand dollars for the well in Sudan, the salute the troops wall, the birthday kits, uh, all the things were just really impressive tonight. And I didn't comment it on the, at, at the time of the presentation, I wanted to wait till the end just to kind of rehash it. Um, congratulations to the robotics team, uh, thank you to all of our volunteers. The ones that were mentioned did a, uh, obviously standout jobs but not to underscore the ones that were not mentioned. Uh, that we rely so heavily upon. I wanted to, to thank all of them as well. Um, other than that, uh, you know, the gifts, like every month, are just mind blowing. Uh, the generosity of our community. So, that being said, I'll give it back to you, Jerry. Um, this was mentioned one mention already, but I want to I want to mention specifically as we go into our uh, major projects around the villages. <clears throat> it's incredible how much noise there was not around the testing. You know, ducks look smooth on the pond, but the feet were paddling like crazy underneath. All of our folks that really made that happen, that's one of those things that if it had not happened the way it happened, there'd be all sorts of noise about it. But it's noiseless, wonderful, how things are supposed to happen to everybody else on the outside, but folks made that happen. That was not an accident. And that just gives me all the confidence as we move into our project planning and our building planning and the millages that we'll replicate that. We'll undoubtedly have hiccups. It's a major undertaking, but it's great to see something like that and salute to those folks who made it happen smoothly. Um, budget, we talked at the budget workshop, so the public did not see this, but there's a lot of activity going on, Lansing on budgeting and financing the schools right now. Uh, things are going through committees as we speak. Uh, we'll be coming out shortly. Uh, one of the major things, and this is for public consumption, is what's called Section 31A. Uh, not to bore you with acronyms, but it's basically funding for at-risk children. Uh, current proposals out there are to fund districts that have a certain percentage of at-risk children. We've made it very clear that an at-risk child in any district is at risk and dollars ought to follow children, not follow districts, because after all, the children are at risk, not the districts. Uh, hopefully, there's going to be some uh, legislation uh, this this week. Uh, <coughs> Representative Glenn has helped drive that. I want to salute him for that. And uh, any input people can have into Lansing to make that happen would help us immensely, because we have a substantial number of at-risk children that we need to do special interventions for, and uh, those children are equally deserving of the funding as any other child in any other district. Um, Can I ask you a question? Yes. Is there anything on the website, or maybe better set toward Mike, that will inform the public what the 31A is and, and why 
you mentioned that it, it's the kids that are at risk and not the district, so somebody who may not have a clear understanding can go and look that up and reach out to Lansing if they have the ability to do so. Not directly on our website, but I, I'm, I'm sure if you linked off of our SEMD, there, there's something there, but we can look at putting something on there as well. Okay. Okay. And then lastly, um, as far as the project bond projects or millage projects, whatever we want to call them are, uh, renewal projects, maybe better said, um, there will be input committees being formed as the architects are working to design. They are formulating how those should be structured now. Uh, just so you know, it's just some preliminary thoughts. Uh, one of the things they're thinking about is doing not committees by building, but by subject area. Okay, so that, that when you look at things on a certain security across the district, you don't have a Dow High look and a Midland High look, you have a security look. So uh, that's under, just want to let people know that we're still dedicated to that, more than dedicated to that, and while it's quiet, doesn't mean things aren't happening, but that's one of the first cuts that, we're, that are, are being formulated. Um, that said, I'll turn it over to Mike. As we're on the bond topic, um, our bond sales is this week, and so on April 23rd, it'll be they'll be sold to market, and Bob Cooper and Carol Lux will actually be there in the action, watching our bonds be sold off that during that day. Um, we, this week we did, or last week we did have our our ratings call from Standards and Poor's. It was very interesting to go through our demographics and our financials and get our credit rating, but it came back. Uh, pretty well actually for for the circumstance we're running into and so we always had the state to fall back onto but I'm not sure if they've chosen which one they're going to use yet we'll know probably later in the week still so did very well there on, on that part of it um, stem discussion and so we're very excited about what's going to occur at the central campus and um, we've been talking to some of our some of our um, foundations and our corporations and we had a great discussion with uh, two representatives from the Dow, Cor Dow Corporation about the potentials at um, the central and I think we're very excited about it um, don't really know what that means yet but we'll, we're gonna have more discussions as we go forward so um, that's exciting as we try to spend a lot of time figuring out um, that STEM school and um, our architects busy already because we want to do that from design up you know if there's an opportunity to design that school um, classrooms the physical structure to fit what would be a STEM elementary school we want to do that right away so we're already out researching those types of things as we go forward Midland High Principal. We mentioned Blake tonight. We lost our IT director, but we also will, will be losing our Midland High School Principal as of June 30th, and and um, I think that's a feather also in Midland Public Schools caps. Anybody who's had influence on Janet can feel proud that Janet's moving on to a wonderful opportunity, and we all, as we all know, she'll be successful whatever she chooses to do. And uh, you know, I fully supported her going forward in that position, and we, we should as well. And uh, we're well in the process of replacing her, <coughs> not wasting any time because we, as you as you know, we've posted that internally. We expect a replacement probably to be internal an internal candidate, and therefore there will be a little bit of a domino effect. Um, and we have that means there's probably another posting to follow that one. And so we're we're getting busy so we can get all the people in the right chairs before. Um, we're too far into the summer months going forward. Um, Jerry, I think, mentioned the bond facility update and that um, Daryl Dombro from Martin Mallow Corporation and Dale Jerome met with FFO and kind of will continue to do that every two weeks. And so um, you may not see them every month, but you will see them um, next month. Daryl's going to be at, your, at the board meeting. Um, but in between, they're meeting every few weeks with FFO community. Can you update them as well? Our technology rollout, part of our bond uh, program a as well, will be a purchase that you'll probably see in the next few months in front of you. And we've took a good study at that, and because of our needs at our middle school level, um, we're going to start there. So we're going to replace our equipment at the middle school level. The testing that you mentioned was going to be somewhat interesting to middle school. We've had to rotate equipment from other buildings to our middle school because we don't have to have enough equipment at this point in time for that middle school so the bond will help in that capacity as well starting in the middle school in year one year two we'll go to the high schools and year three we'll move into the elementary schools with our technology equipment as we go forward and remember the june more uh change of board meeting dates don't need anyone to miss those as um, the budget will be adopted at one of those, those meetings so that's all i have yes and i was remiss in not congratulating janet uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for her it's bay city's Definite gain, so congratulations to her. Absolutely. Anything else? With none, we'll stand adjourned.